Good morning. It is good to see you all on this beautiful Sunday day. Welcome to Unity of Phoenix. My name is Richard Barrage. I'm the lead minister here. And uh, welcome, welcome. And my name is Jimmy Scott, and I'm pastoral care minister here. It's my pleasure to welcome you as well. We've set an intention for this morning's service, and that intention is that you will experience a profound and deep sense of God as we connect together in this service and every aspect of it. So let's get a rolling. Let's get it rolling, as the Rev says. So we are all on a mission from God. And if you choose to accept that mission, it will magically appear on the screen behind me. And I want you to affirm it with feeling, because it is the collective goal and desire we here have, uh, at Unity of Phoenix have as a spiritual community. So let's affirm it together. Unity, Unity of Phoenix, Phoenix is, is a loving spiritual, spiritual community, community that welcomes all people and honors all paths to God. We, we are, are dedicated, dedicated to transforming lives by inspiring and awakening individuals to discover God's spirit within. Everyone we'll just take a deep breath. Open your heart for an amazing experience of God to be touched in an amazing and wonderful way. And just take a deep breath as we're going to set everything aside and open a space for God. Open a space to go deeper into prayer and meditation and to prepare so that experience. Let's now sing, Surely the Presence. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Our weekly reminder that it's that time in the service to temporarily set aside all of the busyness of our lives and to open our hearts and minds to the divine presence that dwells within and all around us. So as we begin together this morning, I invite you to take a deep, relaxing breath. Just kind of shift your body around in your seat and get comfortable. And to begin the conscious process of relaxing and releasing and letting go of all the business and all the activities of your day. Making a conscious effort to focus on this now moment. And turning more inwardly And quietly towards that center space that rests at the very core of your being. And then also beginning the conscious process of slowing the mind down. Quieting all the inner chatter. And becoming still in mind and in body. And 
and take a deep, relaxing, cleansing breath. And then just rest in the quietness and in the stillness of your own being. No cares, no worries. No concerns, no outer distractions. Just quietness and stillness. As we begin our consciousness of prayer this morning, we hold all the persons who have called or written this ministry in our thoughts. And we see them being transformed in mind and in body and in spirit. We hold the same vision for our world and for our universe, a vision of abundance and peacefulness, a vision of contentment and joyfulness, and we know that we have each been given the gift of choice to claim what is ours to do and what is ours to be. And we give thanks for that blessed privilege in the name and through the nature of the living spirit of the Christ. And so it is. And amen.
salvation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Morning again, everyone. And a uh, shout out and welcome to everybody who watches and tunes us in online. Thanks for being with us. So how many people here are uh, facing a challenge or a tough decision um, and that you'd like to find some clarity to make the best decision to find the right solution? Everybody, anybody looking for clarity in a situation? How many people have a goal or dream, something you've been working on that hasn't been going as well and you'd like to see a little more progress or success in some area of your life? And how many people have a relationship, whether it's a personal or a professional relationship, uh, that you would like to be a little bit more peaceful, positive, and harmonious? Anyone have a relationship they'd like to? You know, and the thing is, every single one of us has situations in our lives, challenges, goals, you know, life stuff, that we'd like to be better, that we would like to have more success, more progress, more happiness, more fulfillment. Every one of us is seeking the answers to help us uh, improve some area of our lives. And I don't know about you, I'm not just seeking the answers, I'm looking for the easy answers. Anybody else looking for easy ones? I'm looking for the easy ones, man. I want to snap my fingers, click my heels, blink my eye, say the magic word, kind of, you know, that's what I'm looking, easy. We're all kind of looking for the easy things, but sometimes the answers that we're seeking aren't as easy and they aren't as obvious. Sometimes they aren't exactly what we want to hear that's going to help us improve. You know, it reminds me of this story of this woman who was driving really fast, and she was in a rush, and she was, you know, tailgating right up against the guy's car that was in front of her, and then the light turned yellow in front of the guy, and um, he did the right thing. There was a crosswalk, and he, he stopped, and he could have gone through and, and, and gone through the red and made it, and she would have been able to, but he did the safe and right thing, and the light turned red, and he didn't make it through it, neither did she. Well, she got furious. You know, she was started yelling and ranting and raving because she wasn't able to get through because of this guy's slow pokiness. She thought she was so angry. She put down her cell phone and her makeup and kept yelling <laughs> and screaming at the guy. And then next thing you know, she's still in the middle of her rant and she gets a tap on the window and she looks over and there's the very serious face of a police officer. So the police officer orders her to come out to get out of the car and put her hands up in the air. And then he takes her to the police station and she's uh, searched and fingerprinted and um, photographed and puts her in a holding cell. And she just can't believe this. So two hours later, uh, another officer comes to the holding cell and, and, and takes, him, uh, takes her back to the desk where the arresting officer was there with her possessions. And before she could ask why, the officer says, oh, I'm so sorry, ma'am, really. I'm just so very sorry. You see, when I pulled up behind your car, you were uh, blowing your horn and flipping off the guy in front of you and cursing a blue streak at him. And then I noticed the what would Jesus do bumper sticker. <laughs> the choose life license plate holder. The follow me to Sunday school bumper sticker. And the chrome plated Christian fish emblem on the trunk of the car. So naturally, I assume you stole the car. And um, <laughs> so, uh, so. <laughs> So sometimes, you know, the answers we get aren't exactly the ones we're looking for. And, you know, we're in the, in the third of our four-week series on the Beatitudes. And, um, you know, the, the Beatitudes are, if you know, are the first eight statements of Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount. And within the Beatitudes are contained the entire general spiritual teachings of Jesus' entire ministry. But, when we, but the truth is, sometimes the answers in it aren't, don't seem as obvious. They're not the answers we're looking for or want to hear, but the truth is within the Beatitudes are the incredible spiritual insights and wisdom and the instructions that we need and are all looking for to improve our lives and in so many ways. 
You know, the thing about the Beatitudes that was different is because it, it t- Jesus is inviting us to go deeper than we've gone before. I, inviting ourselves to open ourselves up in a way that we aren't accustomed to opening. Because Jesus noticed, you know, um, w- w- with, uh, with the Pharisees that, and, 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 in, and, and in the beginning of, uh, of what is Christianity, that there were a lot of rules. There were all kinds of rules and regulations you had to obey. And Jesus didn't like the rules or the regulations. He even said about the Sabbath, he wanted to heal someone in the temple on the Sabbath, and they were dissuading him because that was against the rules. And Jesus said, um, the Sabbath was made for man. Man was not made for the Sabbath. And what he was saying is that sometimes in life, we can get so rigid in the rules, so rigid in the outer actions, that we miss the actual spirit of what we're doing. We miss the the, the inner quality. We miss the spirit of what's going on because we're so focused on the outer actions. And what Jesus is saying in, in the Beatitudes is if you get your spirit right, the details of the action will all fall into place. Jesus didn't want to teach about what to do. He was trying to invite people in how to be. He wanted to change the focus from the action to the intention, you know, from the activity you know, to the attitude, you know, from the outcome to the outlook, and, you know, from the condition to the consciousness. And so Jesus is inviting us all to go a bit deeper than we've gone before, to go deeper into ourselves, to go deeper into spirit, to go deeper into life, to go deeper into the divine, because as we tap into that, that that the answers and the actions and all the other things will fall into place that the fulfillment we're seeking and so much more is available to us, but we've got to look in the right place for the answers. So today we're uh, going to look at two Beatitudes. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, and blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And every one of these Beatitudes is set up in a way that says, blessed are you, and you will get this. And so it's saying, blessed are you if you develop this attitude of being, this consciousness, for there will be something greater that you will create from it. So let's go with blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So now mercy is about compassion, it's about forgiveness, is that when you're kind and thoughtful and considerate and want to relieve unpleasant situations from someone, you want to help them, you know, and bring benefit to them, that when you are merciful, you will receive compassion and love and kindness. You will receive greater things. And so what Jesus is doing here is, is really sharing a a, a universal law that whatever you give out, it's not just about mercy, whatever you express, that you will attract more of the very, very same thing. It is the law of consciousness. It is the law of mind action. It is the thoughts that we hold will create the circumstances that we experience. And he does it not just for mercy, but he shares this universal law in the book of Luke. He says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. For the measure you give will be the measure you receive. In every area, it's saying that whatever consciousness you hold in life, you will get more of it. You will attract more of that very same thing. You know, like begets like. Whatever we cultivate in the inner will be expressed in the outer. What we cultivate in the unseen will be expressed in the seen. Because life is consciousness. We are creating with our thoughts, our attitudes, our, our, and, and our outlooks and mindset. How many people believe that's the truth? How many people believe that? That we create by our consciousness, absolutely. Now, however, you know, just like the lady didn't act in the same way her bumper sticker said, we can say we believe that, and we do, but sometimes there are things that are underlying that prevent us or stop us or we don't act in that same way. I bet every single one of us at some point has probably blamed someone else for why our lives aren't going as well. Sometimes we have said, oh, you know, if my family wasn't so dysfunctional, I'd be much happier. You know, if my ex wasn't uh, such a so-and-so, I don't know what that means, but I'm just saying, I've heard some people say that. You know, if my boss would just give me a break, if the economy would just pick up a little bit, if this weather wasn't so horrible and miserable, Every one of us at some level has some belief or idea. If this person were different, or that situation were different, or if I had some more money or more education, if something else outside of me were different or better, my life would get better. And so 
we sometimes struggle under, you know, applying this bumper sticker principle because inside we have some ideas that other people are causing me to not, and other situations are preventing me from experiencing a level of happiness and fulfillment that I am seeking or desiring. And that's it because at some level we don't believe we have the power. At some level we think other people and conditions have more power over our lives than we do. And at some level, quite frankly, it's nice to have an excuse, just in case I mess up, to blame someone else. And while it's a lovely little game we can play, it's not very helpful. Here's a question. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So my question is, who determines if we're going to be merciful or not? We do. So what Jesus is saying here is that blessed are those who choose to be loving and kind and compassionate and caring. Blessed are those who choose their own consciousness that reflects the quality of life that they want, for that will change their life and conditions and attract greater things. It's making sense, everybody. So what Jesus is saying in this thing is that if you're looking for your life to get better, realize that you're the one that controls your consciousness. If something isn't going well, look within and cultivate the consciousness of that which you are seeking or desiring. Every one of us is the ter determiner and the activator of that law of mind action. We are the ones. But sometimes, even though we have the power, sometimes we don't take the time to get clear. Anybody ever been unsure about what you want? Anybody ever been unsure? You know, while we have this power, sometimes we don't take the time to think, what is it that I want? What is it that I really want to create? Think about it. What, it, what kind of life do you want to create? What are three words to describe the kind of person that you want to be? What are three words to describe the outlook that you want to have towards other people and the world, you know, and, and who you are? So, I mean, it's important for us to take the time to get clear on what, are the, what is the consciousness I want to create? What is the person I want to be? If, you know, if something's not going well, what is a better consciousness for you to hold? You know, if we want a happy and harmonious life, we need to cultivate a consciousness of happiness and, uh, and harmony. So Thursday, I flew to Washington, D.C. to meet a friend of mine. For the last uh, 13 or 14 years, my friend Mike from North Carolina and I meet in a location um, because I have a goal of seeing an NBA basketball game in every NBA, ba every NBA city. So we got, I'd never been to Washington, D.C. before, and I, we went to see the Wizards against the Pacers play f last Friday night. And so I'd never been to D.C., so I was so excited, just so, so excited. So we get there on Thursday. We just go to the hotel, eat some food, and uh, we get up the next day, decided we're going to go discover Washington. So get out there, and it's rainy and cold. And for some reason, I think everywhere is nice like Phoenix, and I didn't take very good clothes. So it's rainy and cold, and it's rainy. And then, so we asked the uh, hotel people for an umbrella. They ran out of umbrellas. We missed the last trolley that came to the, for, for tours that came uh, to the hotel. So I'm walking uh, outside, and like, I'm thinking, oh, it, it, it's my first time here, and it's rainy. It's miserable. I want it to be sunny. It's not right. This isn't it's going to mess up my whole visit. <laughs> and then I think to myself, Rev, Rev, are you really going to let a little bit of rain and coolness affect your first time experience in this amazing city? So I went and put on a t-shirt. We went and bought an umbrella. And I did, oh, and actually, no, before I did that, I decided, so what kind of day would you like to have? And I thought, I want to have a fun, playful, spontaneous adventure and I want to feel an even greater connection with my friend Mike. So, and I that, breathed into it and held that consciousness. Then we went and got the umbrella and got the stuff. And do you know what? We toured around and we had a great day. Went to the Lincoln Memorial, saw the White House, the Washington Monument, to be where Martin Luther King was when he spoke. I mean, that scene is absolutely spectacular. But I ask you a question. Have you ever allowed a little bit of rain to affect your day? I mean, I almost let rain rob me from a great and joyful experience. I almost went through the whole day thinking, oh, it would have been much better if it was sunny, you know. And sometimes we rob ourselves, but it, you have to check in sometime to say, is this the consciousness that I'm living out of? Because the consciousness is what creates the experience, not the condition. 
A little bit of rain is going to stop joy and adventure and connection and a happy experience. So I ask you, what condition are you letting stop you from holding a consciousness of love or playfulness or creativity or passion? You know? One of the things that, I, that I've really come to realize is that you can't think one thing and get another. You just can't. You can't think one thing and, and expect something else. You know, Emmett Fox says the most dangerous thing that we all do, the detrimental thing that we do to ourselves, is continuously hold thoughts of lack, limitation, and negativity. You know, holding lots of lack, limitation, and negativity, and wondering why I'm not feeling as happy, is like, it's like smoking, not exercising, and eating fatty foods, and wonder why I'm not feeling healthier and more energetic. And my, this might sound silly, but sometimes, again, we got a bumper sticker that says one thing, and we're not following it, and we're wondering why. And the question is, are our thoughts and words and our ideas and our mindset in alignment with the kind of life we really want to live? Because we need to not just own the power and get clear, but we got to be consistent with it. We need to be more consistent. And the other deeper thing is there's a great responsibility here because the, 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 the truth is that we're all connected. We are all one. You know, uh, Charles Fillmore says, the quality of your level of prosperity is directly related to the quality of life that you hold towards other people. That when we hold a thought of negativity towards others, we're praying that same prayer for ourselves. You can't pray negativity for other people and, pray, and expect prosperity for yourself. You can't pray negativity to someone and have peace for ourselves. We are all connected, which means every one of us has a responsibility to raise the level and quality of thoughts that we have about ourselves. So not only that we can enjoy our lives, so that we can show up and be a better example for other people that we have a responsibility to hold the highest thoughts of the people in our lives, to be merciful and compassionate because the, we are connected, that when we send it out, it comes back to us, and it also makes a difference in our world. This is a powerful, powerful beatitude that says you are the one that has the power to change your consciousness, your attitude. The question is, are you willing to get clear and then to align yourself and bathe yourself and be consistent so that your life can be transformed? Change your consciousness, change your life. Raise your consciousness, and you will raise the quality of your own life. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And the second one is, blessed are the pure, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Anybody ever do something and your heart really wasn't that pure? Anybody ever have that? Okay. You know, and, and sometimes in, in our lives, you know, we have a heavy heart. You know, or we have a sad heart, or we have a closed off heart. And I love how it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see. Because the condition of your heart affects how much you see. See, sometimes our heart is so closed off, we can't see the good in our lives. We can't see the good in other people. He's no good. I can't see no good in him. It's a sign the heart's closed. The heart, and, the, and, and, and they're beautiful analogies, that when the, the, the heart is closed, we can't see the beauty and the goodness and the possibilities in our lives. So the fact is, if we're stuck in any area of our lives, in a relationship, in our career, in our finances, we need to ask ourselves, what am I holding in my heart that I need to let go? The, whether it's jealousy, or anger, or judgment, or resentment, or hatred. Sometimes we hold things in our hearts, we're angry at the government, we're angry at the economy, you know, we're, you know we're, we're angry at Walmart or somebody, you know what I mean? It, it, it sounds silly, but to be pure in heart means to clarify and purify yourself of anything that is disturbing you or stopping you from feeling the full presence of God, the full presence of peace. So ask, what is in your heart that you need to let go? What is in your heart that you need to purify and release? What in your heart is stopping you from feeling the fullness of the presence of God? You remember what David you know, David was, was a great man and a great king, but David didn't always make the right moves. And King David, you know, you know, remember he had this affair with Bathsheba, and then when he was called by Nathan, he wrote the 51st Psalm. That's where he says, you know, I was, uh, you know, I I was sinful before birth, and I was conceived in sin. He was lamenting about how bad he felt. But in that wonderful passage, in, in, in the 91st, and he's lamenting him not making the, a good choice, he, he wrote these words as a part of the psalm. And I've said it before, but I just love it so much. He is, he's asking for mercy and, and for God to come in his heart, and it says, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and put in me a new and a right spirit. Put in me, put within me 
a new and a right spirit. And so what that's saying is that in one of the most powerful things we can do, if we want to go deeper into life, is to search your heart and see what's heavy on your heart, what's holding your heart, what's closing your heart, and do a simple prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Everybody, think of something that might be heavy on your heart right now. Think about that. And I want you to just take a deep breath. And let's say half voice together with a sincere intention. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Together. Create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord. Deep breath. Release from me all thoughts of fear, lack, and negativity. Half voice together. Release from me all thoughts of fear, lack, and negativity. Deep breath. Release all that I'm conscious of and not conscious of. Together, release all that I'm conscious of and not conscious of. Deep breath. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Together, create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Deep breath. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God that the more pure our heart, the more we see or have a spiritual, um, a spiritual perception and a spiritual awareness to see ourselves and others in life in a more spiritually centered way, in a more spiritually centered way. One of my favorite uh, Broadway musicals is The Man of La Mancha. Anybody ever seen The Man of La Mancha? It's a fabulous musical. Um, uh, Miguel de Cervantes, and it's about Don Quixote uh, de La Mancha. And it's about this old guy, Alonzo Quijana, who people think he's nuts. He's kind of gone off the edge. And you know, he sees Will Mills, and he thinks they're dragon, and he wants to slay them. You know, he sees this prostitute, and he sees her as a beautiful queen. He sees the opposite of what everyone sees. People think he's nuts. And one of my favorite lines in it, in the whole play, says... Sancho, he says to his sidekick, facts are the enemy of the truth. And the fact is sometimes we could look at our lives and see the facts. This isn't going well or I've lost a job or there's conflict here or there's not enough money there. We can let the facts get in the way of the truth. And when we have a pure heart, we're actually be able to see beyond the appearance to the greater truth in a situation. That even though a situation may not look pretty on the outside, with a pure heart, we can see that there's good in this situation and that this situation is going to lead me to something greater. And we don't freak out as much. Let me give you a really good example. Remember Jesus with the loaves and, fitch, uh, loaves and fishes? Here's a situation that suddenly, you know, he's about to give his sermon and there's just not enough food to feed all these people. And he knows that, 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 that people can get cranky uh, when they are hungry. They're not going to listen. There's just not enough. And a situation he could have easily panicked over. But instead, he was able to, because of his pure heart, to see, to perceive spiritually, to see that there was still good in the situation, to see he didn't need to panic, and to see that he could even attract more good things. A situation of lack to the human eye, with the spiritual eye, he was able to see abundance and greater possibilities. See, that the more we purify our heart, create in me a clean heart, O oh Lord, we can go deeper, and we'll be able to see spiritual truths in ourselves and in the world that we won't panic, but we're able to stay calm and realize that something greater will come forth. Wally Famous Amos, the cookie guy, was being interviewed and asked, an interviewer was asked, trying to get him questions about how did you become so successful? What was the key to your success? And, you know, before he could even get out, uh, you know, be, before he even answered the question, he went to the window and he opened the window of this high uh, penthouse um, room at, in, in downtown Atlanta and he opened the window and he said to the reporter, what do you see out there? And he said, well, um, traffic, buildings. No, no, what do you see? I go, people, uh, street lights, stores. What do you know? What do you really see? He said, I don't know. What do you see? He says, when I look out there, I see possibilities. And it might sound funny, but when you look at the landscape of your current life, what are you seeing? Are you seeing the good? Are you seeing the beauty? Are you seeing the possibilities? Are you seeing the greatness? Are you seeing the potential? What are you seeing? The pure, more we purify our heart, the deeper we go into God, and the more we're able to see through the eyes of the Christ.
to see through a God consciousness, to see the greater things that we are here for and not get caught up in the minutia. And every single one of us is looking for answers. Every single one of us wants some guidance in how to find more peace and harmony and success in our lives. And what Jesus is saying, the answer's in you. The question is, are you willing to go a little bit deeper? Are you willing to realize that you've got the power to cultivate the consciousness and the mindset of whatever you want to experience? The question is, are you going to use it? Are you going to cultivate it more consistently? So allow yourself to attract the quality of life that you want. And are you willing to let go of the things that are holding and heavy on your heart to purify your heart so that you can see God? You can see the greater possibilities that life has for you. You know, it's all available there for us. The question is, are you willing to go a little deeper into your life, into the Beatitudes, into spirit, into God, to get the richness of the good that you are here to live? God bless you all. All right. So thanks for being here, guys. Looking forward to hearing your uh, prayer protection. Let's all rise now as we sing with the kids our song of peace. Thanks for... Let's follow the kids' lead with a prayer of protection. Kids? The love of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The presence of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. God bless you. What a good day and a wonderful weekend. Let's go outside and welcome our new members.